officially. Good morning, everybody. Welcome out to the Market Watch Group midweek check in. So, market got a little, a little spooked by something yesterday. We talked a little bit about it last night. Said I really don't feel that concerned. Um, it, from a market posture standpoint, we'll go through it. It wasn't. It was a negative volume day, which that will likely bring my volume score down to zero. The VIX is holding on to some volatility. Um, lost volume, no sound. Uh oh. How about now? Yes, we're back. Okay. Interesting. Sorry, I didn't even notice. I'm just leaning back in my chair. And we're good, though. Okay. Let's let's dive in. Disclaimers, as always, not brokers, not advisors. We don't give recommendations or guidance. It's for illustrative and educational purposes only. And what are we going to do today? Talk about market analysis. Talk about revisiting the posture. Um, that's that's where. Uh, the sound may be cut in and out in reflecting on so far this week, even in the first two days, what do we notice? I notice a, a big volume day on the sell-off yesterday. It's going to take a, unless we get, unless we get a counter day now, which is what we've been seeing each week. It's like sell day, then buy day, sell day, then buy day. So we have. A back and forth, which ultimately gives us a positive score. We give the tie to the, we give the tie to the buyers. But if all of a sudden we have one extra, that's gonna that's gonna drop the score back to a zero. Volume is no longer contributing to the overall market posture score. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. That's to be expected. Based on having a stronger trend score, we don't need volume. We don't have to have breakout volume day today. It doesn't need it. But the VIX, it's, it's holding on. I don't know why. It's holding on to that fear. Uh, it certainly has me thinking. Um, those of you here, thoughts. What do you make of the VIX? Are you hedging? Are you preparing to hedge? Or have you dialed back your bullish trading enough that now you're like, I don't need to hedge anymore. I only have a couple of things on. If the market starts to drop, I'll shut those last couple of things down. That sometimes happens organically while we're waiting. Like, oh, I might need to put a hedge on. And then you close a bull trade. And then you close another bull trade. And then you tighten it. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a second. What am I hedging for? If you're not hedging, then you're speculating. And the question is, are you looking to be speculative bearish right now based on current market conditions? My answer is no. Okay, that's it. That's the thought process we're going through. Uh, we want to understand mindset for open trades. As I said, most likely anything that you've been in, i got to imagine you've scaled out, pared down, tightened stops, and closed up shop. We'll look at the opportunity lists. If you weren't there last night, Really keying in on three core sectors right now for new trades uh, and, and for leading the current market momentum. Technology. Um, financials. And industrials. And, and in, a, in a peripheral yet still strong position, I would put communication services, which are four of our five strongest growth. We're uncertain about consumer discretionary. I would say un uncertain about consumer at all. It's, it is an interesting group right now. Okay, fair enough. We did some searching, found some new things. Uh, I think the watch list looks pretty strong. So we'll go through the list, explore setups, and don't forget working on section two in the trading plan. Okay, so let's talk about it. What do we have going on? Futures look great. Right? 
the futures look great. S&P. Astounding? No, they're up 0.06. That's pretty marginal. Same with the Dow, 0.03. NASDAQ, 0.13. Russell, 0.72. Oh. Now, as we look at some of the subtle happenings within the market, um... As we look at some of the more subtle things like the shifting among asset class size, large caps and small caps particularly, oh, I feel like there's been a, a pretty decent shift and we're starting to see the small caps push it more into a leadership position, which uh, that, from a market posture standpoint, will, will maybe bring in a quarter of a point. More bullish, exactly, Press, 100%. 100%. Um, oil is flat, gold still pushing a little higher. I was just on a site looking at... Um, looking at some uh, physical prices <laughs> for the holidays. Oh, I should have bought more last year. Um, okay. Okay. Um, sorry. Just looking at a future. Uh, let's keep going. What's on the calendar? Wednesday, nothing. Import price index, nobody cares. Import price index minus fuel, nobody cares. Oh, breaking news. Novavax share slump 16% as FDA puts clinical hold on vaccine candidates. Oh. Uh, silver's, yeah, I'm buying some. Press, I've got, I've got some, got some to buy. <clears throat> not like a ton. I'm thinking like a couple five ounce bars, one one for each kid. Maybe yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. A couple of one or two ounce bars that go in their little uh, uh, twelve days of Christmas before. I don't know, twelve ounces, fourteen ounces. What does that equal? I don't even know. I can't do math. What site? I'm looking at JM Bullion. That's that's where I got it last year. So I'm just going to the same place. It was pretty easy. Do you have recommendations? I'm not like a big physical buyer. So if anyone has uh, has recommendations, that's <clears throat> it seemed to be pretty close to spot prices. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. So nothing in the news today. Put put your recommendations if you have any. Um, I'm still looking at maybe getting one of those one ounce bars of silver or of gold from uh, from Costco just because I I want one. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, Thursday. What do we have? Retail sales. Industrial production, capacity utilization. Oh. So this is uh, this is a little sneaky. How did we not talk about this last week? Where's last week's news? Um, how did we not talk about that? 258 on that day. I mean, it's not like it was like, oh, that's a huge number. But it is a it is a pop when we've been sitting 225, 230, just kind of lulling along at 225 to 230, 258. I'm not sure how I missed that. Did I mention it last week and I don't remember mentioning it or did I not mention it? Because I don't remember mentioning it. We did talk about it. Okay. Okay, Miguel. 
That's fair. I, I would think that I would. Now I'm. Now I, it's it's definitely makes more sense that I just simply am forgetting that I did. <laughs> but okay, so two fifty eight, and what are we expecting now? Two sixty. Okay, that's two weeks at two sixty. <coughs> 260 is kind of like the minimum threshold. I'm really looking to get like, if I have three weeks in a row, I mean, maybe we should just put like a firm number on it because it's not 250. I, I kind of feel like 275. If it, if it hits 275 or if it hits an average of 275 over three weeks. So if it's like 260, then 275, then 290, well, then that that three-week average is now 275. So three in a row above 275 or an average of 275 over the last three weeks. Then we're going to be like, okay, that's not great. What's going on with employment? We've seen it pop up before to 260, 270 even for a week or two, and then it comes back down. And we're like, oh, okay. So right now, <clears throat> are we scared? No. Are we alerted? Yes. Alerted to be mindful. I mean, yeah, I guess that's it. Alerted to be mindful. That's our stance. Tomorrow, we have a couple of, in, of, of real estate reports housing starts building permits nobody cares next week it's real light Lori logan Lori logan is no austin goolsby that's for sure tuesday philadelphia fed the philly feds no chicago fed that's for sure base book maybe thursday nothing friday a minor consumer sentiment. We don't have much <clears throat> by way of economic releases, but we do have earnings releases. So we have to be aware of what is <clears throat> corporate America telling us. So far, the financial <clears throat> financials we've seen have been coming back pretty okay. Um, all right. Three weeks, <clears throat> three weeks in today <clears throat> from the Fed. Nope, three weeks in a day because it, they won't not announce it until the Thursday. They'll kick it back a day because of the election. Uh, and now, interesting, uh, we've shifted. A week ago, it was 20%. Now it's only five. So bake, baking in one quarter point. That's where we're at right now. Um, yeah, okay, there it is. Let's go. Let's go talk about what's happening, what's transpiring. There's the futures. There's the market. So again, yesterday, yesterday we did have above average volume. Average was forty nine six. We had 54.2. So we were about 10% above average. Um, however, we just made a higher high, a new all-time high. There's nothing concerning here, especially as I look at this and think to myself, what's the follow-through? What is the follow-through? Well, as of right now, minimal. Day is young, of course. We're just two minutes in. Who knows? I have. I could see this thing pulling back into this space here and bouncing. That would be just fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no like, oh, man, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Minor pullback. Let's go look at the VIX real quick. Because the VIX is baffling. I, I'm not sure what's keeping it at 20%. 
And right now, yeah. So I will say this: if you don't, if you don't, I don't have much left. So I might not hedge it. I might think to myself, you know what? This thing could just go where it's up for a day or two and then comes back. Kind of like this, where it's elevated, it it starts to turn and then it turns back and then it and then it drops. Because from here to here and here to here, those were great bullish opportunities. And that could be the same thing. Um so here's a question for the group. Do you have a lot, some, minimal for bullishness. Um, a lot. Today's the day. None. Okay, so then that's that's. This the answer to this question is your guide to your um your guide to how likely you are and how much you would hedge. Sandy, there's no need. She has nothing on. Miguel got quite a bit more. If he sees this VIX turn and start to pop, he might go ahead and put something on. In order to have it in place, and if the market sells off, it's a lot easier for him to manage his trades um, knowing that the hedge is in place. This is concerning. I, I don't like the way that the VIX looks right now. I, I think it could play itself out fairly easily, but... In the short term, if you've got some bullish trades on, yeah, you might you might want to be uh, ready to to help cover that. Let's take a look at the watch list, which has expanded. So I need to post that. Apple, ooh, Apple, Apple got up there yesterday, pulling back a little today. Now. Um, Ideally, hopefully, as you saw Apple hitting up at its all-time high, hopefully, if you were in it, you took some and pared it down. Um, and the rest of it, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to wait and see. I think it could get back up, potentially. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Aflac, pausing, but certainly not breaking. Uh, Amazon. So it bounced and then it stalled. If it if it pulls back and and only drops halfway into this channel and turns back, I actually would be I would be willing to take a look at that. <laughs> Here's a new one: APO Financial. It's overextended. We gotta wait, but it's. Certainly got some good momentum. Uh, App Lovin. This is a new one out of the tech sector, I believe. I don't know if I'm saying the name even correctly. App Lovin? App Lovin? I feel like it's App Lovin. Like, we love apps. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's right or not. Let me get my watch list so I can see the chat. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good, right? Little a little small pullback. Last time it didn't do much before it took off again. So I'm I'm definitely watching this one. Hi Vol. This is this is a uh, spread candidate. For me, if I were to if I were to do something with it, AXP still still okay. Um, I would imagine if you're in it, you've at least taken some gains, and now you are uh, you're here looking at what's left. Um, what 
let's see. Let's keep going. Titan stops, and if the VIX hits trigger, then hedge. Love it. Bank of America has some momentum. Kind of sitting. BK. BK is strong, but looks a little bit overextended. Just waiting for the next opportunity. BLDR, it's still grinding it out, right? It's still grinding it out. For sure. Okay. Let's keep going. BX is new. Mm, just missed what might have been it. Earnings here coming up. We'll see if it if something comes out of this and, and develops. Okay, let's go. Carrier still showing a bit of potential. Caterpillar. I like Caterpillar for industrials. That's uh that's a leader. Caterpillar's doing well. This is a leader in the group. I think it's looking close. Let's keep an eye on Caterpillar. CMG. Uh did you did you close out? Sandy, I thought you had a piece of this. Good profit. Love it. Love it. Okay. Costco. Costco still setting up. Right? Costco still setting up. Um, waiting. But still some possibility there. Copart is new. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I would take this one right out. I mean, it's a, a nice little cup and handle type situation. If it comes down and stabilizes somewhere around this 53 and a half to 54 level, I certainly, um, I certainly think it's got some opportunity to it, right? Okay. Dow is sitting flat, fast and all. Just kind of waiting to see. FIS, Fidelity National, bullish, waiting for a pullback. Bitcoin, here's GE, still bullish on that. And that looks like it's... Uh, uh, coming into maybe coming into focus for a new trade soon. GEV is flat. Gold still moving. Corning, this is new. GLW looks uh, strong, like a pullback. Let's take a look at silver. See if press is right. Lock in our ooh, press. I missed it. I missed a little bit already. I got to get it before it breaks this cup and handle right here at 29 and a half. If it breaks this cup and handle, uh, I think we're getting 20%. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You got to do it.
Okay. We've got some more stuff that's new. Google, Google's paused. We'll see. Goldman's strong, but waiting for a pullback. Home Depot, still kind of iffy. Robin Hood, strong, but waiting for a pullback. IBM is new. IBM is strong. Great trend. Just got to a new high. What's the thought process here? Yeah, waiting a little bit now, right? Little bit of a wait. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Yeah, I like that a lot. And that's in a bit of a setup. The only problem is we got earnings. Financial, IBN. Uh, I don't, I'm not seeing why I liked this one. Mm, I might have to go back to my search or my recording. Um... Yeah. Anyone have insight? I'm I'm looking at this and I'm thinking uh kind of iffy. I'll leave it for a minute. It doesn't make sense to me that I put that there. Here's the Russell up 0.8, staying pretty good. Johnson Controls. Okay, that's new, KKR. Running out of steam, maybe the end of the road. MasterCard. Looks okay. McDonald's, anyone took it? It's already kind of running out of steam here. Meta's pulling back, looking for the next opportunity. MMM. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to get rid of MMM. We never traded it. I'm, I'm a little bit not loving the consumer um, staples. So, uh, yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Tell me if there's one you guys think we should be talking about, and I have it. Microsoft. Ooh, Microsoft is a, a little hiccup. A little hiccup, but we'll see what happens here. Um, yeah. NDAQ. Kind of an iffy day, right? Oh, look at Netflix. Can it hold? Can it turn? Let's look at NRG. They're trying to move these. NVIDIA is on a bit of a pullback. PEG trying to move. PLTR. Oh, here it comes, you guys. PLTR. You know another trade will be coming on PLTR. We've had two two good ones in a row. We're looking for the turkey. The hat trick, whatever you want to call it. PayPal. PayPal looks like it's also in the midst of a uh, setup. Okay, let's keep going. Here's the cues. 
Q's pulling back a little bit today. That's all right. Um, again, if the volume slows down, there's nothing here that seems unreasonable, right? Nothing at all that seems unreasonable. RTX, flat, southern. It's still going. Looks fine. If you happen to have taken this or XLU is another one, we'll look at that. SoFi is new, looking for a pullback. Here's the SPY, real flat now. We're 20 minutes in. We have a full opening range. What does the opening range look like? Stability, we'll see. Does it hold? Does it break? What's next? What is next? Let's go back here to Tesla. Tesla, ooh. I think Tesla could be heading further down. Here's TSM. TSM. If this, if you happen to stay in it, uh, this is kind of your last, like, hey, you got a chance before the next pullback in earnings. TTD, the trade desk looks good in a bit of a pullback. That's a nice looking setup there. So you can see we added some good, strong stocks um, based on our searching. Uh, here's UUP, the dollar still strong. Here's the VIX. Um, yeah, the VIX is kind of looking like a, a, a hedge trigger if you've got enough uh, trades on. Be ready for that at the end of the day. VST, kind of flat. Walmart, kind of flat. Let's look at the XLs real quickly. Basic materials still looks all right. XLC. XLC looks um, okay. Like I said, it's peripheral. Energy has pulled back. Financials, strong. One of the reasons why we wanted to add some stocks. Look how strong that looks. Industrial, strong. One of the reasons we wanted to add there. Technology, strong but pulling back. This is where I think some setups are occurring. Staples, iffy. Utilities, already pulled the trigger. Still moving. XLV, iffy, XLY, iffy, and another new stock at the end of the list, ZTO. All right, uh, let's talk about the trading plan. Let's talk about the trading plan. Okay, so we have one more. This is this week, remember, you're just defining your routines. You're defining what it means when you get a posture. You're defining at any given time your trading posture. You should have a sense of what those implications mean at any given time, knowing how many trades you might take, what types, how long those trades may last, how you might adjust your risk, what strategies or systems make sense for this market, and what type of trade management you're going to implement. I don't want to have to decide those things on a trade-by-trade -trade basis. I want those things to be decided from a, a broader market level basis. And that's where you're trying to, to draw those connections. Lastly, what's the mechanisms for hedging? That's what we're looking for, right? We're looking to... Uh, have this all set, designed, ready to go. That's what we're looking for. Um, questions, comments, concerns. How's everybody feeling? That's an important question. And of course, the follow-up question is, is that how you want it to feel? Miguel's feeling good. Absolutely, he wanted to feel that way. Stopped out on Microsoft. Okay. I mean, look, you know, even in good markets, we've got to know things are going to be moving, pushing. We'll have some stops. We'll take some losses. Feeling good. Love it, you guys. Love it. All right. All right. Well, let's talk about the schedule. Today, this afternoon, if you're around, Glenn will be here. 
to wrap the market up the last hour of the day. Uh, tomorrow, nothing during the day. Uh, then we'll have Glenn to start me in the second part of the foundations class in the evening. Friday, Glenn will open. I'll take the afternoon. So we'll see you plenty. How is the cri Kelly criteria measured? Kelly criteria is looking at accuracy. So how often are you right or wrong? And it's looking at your reward to risk ratio. So the efficiency. So it's actually looking very much at the same characteristics as expectancy. But expectancy looks backwards and says, based on how you did, for every dollar you put at risk, how much do you expect to make in return? Kelly looks forward and says, based on how well your system is performed, going forward, what level of risk will produce the highest amount of return? And so, yes, the higher, the better, right? So what will produce a high Kelly? If you have a system that's right, so if you have a high expectancy system, but you're only right 40, 30, 30 or 40% of the time, the fact that you're more likely to have a string of losers, Kelly's going to force you to take less risk. Whereas if you have a lower expectancy, but that expectancy is built off of a system that's right 70% of the time, the fact that you're right 70% of the time means that you have much less risk of ruin. So it's going to allow you to take a higher level of risk. That's what it's looking at. The higher, the better, most definitely. Where can you find a copy of the trading plan that I shared? That is in 78 is fantastic. In fact, you would have to be careful because that could lead you to take more risk. Press, if you come in for now and you come into the trading resources and you scroll down to the very bottom of trading resources, you're going to see the sample trading plan. Click there. Bam. Download it. It's yours. No charge. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> all right. It's good to see everybody. Uh, Glenn, I'll see you later. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, certainly feel free to continue the conversation in the trading discussions chat box or chat room. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. As always, happy trading. <laughs>